There is also the emergence of new technologies, artificial intelligence, data, machine learning, quantum computing, space, biotechnology. Now these technologies promise unprecedented productivity and wealth creation. But these technologies can also be misused to trigger conflict. And it's important that we have a pro-innovation policy which will drive growth and prosperity for the humanity. International regulations are necessary so that there is no misuse against humanity. So what we are seeing is a remarkable period of stability from the end of World War II through to the early 21st century has come to an end. We are in the midst of global challenges with India is planning to grow and expand. There are some other challenges which we need to realize domestically. The top 50% of our population actually creates growth, it actually creates, secures well-paid jobs, it drives growth and prosperity. And the bottom 50% lives mainly in rural areas relying on agriculture, wage labor, or as government welfare schemes to achieve basic living standards. It is important that we transform uh, the lives of these people, the bottom 50%. If we were to have a 50% growing for prosperity and a 50% living on uh, wages in the agricultural sector alone and through government subsidies, that means India will grow only at 6%. This is good if we want to achieve 6% growth. But if we want to achieve 9 to 10% growth over three decades till 2047, we will need to transform the bottom 50% of India's income distribution from being passive beneficiaries of government welfare schemes to very active contributors to their personal and national growth. And this is what all of them want. They appreciate reliable delivery of food grains, but as the government has said, that, that it will drive growth and prosperity for all citizens. And that is why we had the aspirational district program, which based on outcomes really transformed the 115 districts of India. Based on that experience, my view is that we have to enhance productivity. And higher productivity requires high focus on human development index. It means that we have to improve social indicators, our learning outcomes, our health outcomes, and our skills. Uh, data shows that our learning outcomes leave a lot to be desired. You know, almost 35% of the students uh, under five are not able to solve, even when they are class in class 10, are not able to solve class four maths or the, even in their mother tongue, or do physics or chemistry. And today, uh, you know, it's important to improve these learning outcomes and improve our health outcomes. And every country that has grown on a sustained basis of over 8% over a long period of time has actually had very high quality education with improved learning and health outcomes for its citizens. And therefore, it's very important that we should utilize our biggest advantage. And our biggest advantage lies in the demographic dividend. India is one of the youngest nations with a median age of 29. And this accounts for nearly 20% of the world's total population of youth. That means out of the total young population in the world, 20% of that population comes from India. So what do we need to do? What are the key reforms? What are the key challenges that we need to undertake? First and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, I am a strong believer that if India is to grow at 9 to 10 percent over the next three decades and become a developed economy by 2047, we need to improve our learning outcomes, our health outcomes, and our nutritional standards in a very big way. And this would mean that many of the states like Bihar and Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh and Rajasthan and MP, they account for almost 50 percent of our population. And therefore, uh, their share of agriculture, they, it is very critical that we transform them. It is important that they become the key uh, driver of improvement on human development index.